know, and sometimes I have to look upside the head, you know. <laughs> I think this read my face. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. You know, but I just thank God because, uh, you know, we had got a moving violation prior to us uh, going to Houston. You know, and uh, uh, so anyway, you know, we got, you know, got that ball rolling. And, uh, thank you, Lord. You know, we come our way home. You know, and it was, you know, it was cars, you know, speed and everything. And, Y'all probably need to start the school, the state school supplies getting out at the stores, but 
it's gonna be all right because you know school starting shortly. But thank God I have a career. You yes, know, some yes, people don't even have yes. jobs, so I can say yes. that I have a career. So y'all pray for me and my family as we grow stronger in the Lord. Amen. 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 Give the Lord some praise. Give Him some praise. He is worthy. He is worthy. We've got what I am. We're going to let her praise the Lord today. Amen. Amen. She's got her hand up. Amen. Praise the daughter. Amen. I want to thank God for giving me another day. Yeah, yeah. Everybody that knows me knows that I'm pretty blue, but I'm pretty much blue with my health. And another day is being turned around. I see so. Jesus. Getting better. Amen. And everybody knows this knows how I am about my children. I'm very proud of my children. Thank you, Jesus. And my oldest son, he's in college. He was supposed to graduate, but he chose to take additional courses to stay in college. And he's worked very hard and he's worked and saved money to buy himself his own car. So he bought a new car. And All right. so I've been very proud of him during this course. And and everything, so they chose to elect him to become a coach, even though he's not getting any good right now, but it's the experience. That all right, right, all right, right, all right. And with that experience, you know, coming out of college, that will be very helpful to him. Right. But also with that experience and him working hard, he's working as a server, but with that, he just texted me on yesterday Give the Lord some praise. Amen. Amen. The Lord has brought Sister Katrina a mighty long way. Amen. Amen. And I'll tell you what, uh, she's got a right to praise him because if it had not been for the Lord on her side, I'm telling you, the enemy will dog you out. Amen. He will stomp you in the ground. He will do everything he can to hinder you. And we thank God for his praise. Did you have a praise sis? I've seen said, praise the Lord for carrying me as far as he did. Um, I'm all the way from California nine months ago. Uh, it wasn't by accident I ended up here. He wanted me here. Um, I was very sick, very sick. Couldn't even get through those doors. I was in a wheelchair. Look how far the Lord has carried me. There were doctors back in California saying I need a hip and knee replacement. I said, no, that's not what's going on. Now I have a doctor here. Thank the Lord. He sent me to him, and now it's on to the podiatrist, and he gives me shots in my ankle. That's where they found the problem. Soon, and I know if I trust in the Lord more, I gotta really trust him Hallelujah. that I can walk again without this, without being able to get anything. I had a dream the other night that I was down here, and I told my friend back in California, and she told me exactly what the Lord wanted to say to me, that I was not on ground, and it was in vivid color, but I was walking this way and through those doors. She said, and I didn't realize that, that the Lord was lifting me up to a higher level, and I had no idea. I thank all of you at Five Away. Uh, thank you for making me feel welcome, and you trust me, and the baptism. Who'd ever think that the pastor said, are you ready on a Wednesday night? And I said, ready for what? And he goes, you're going in the water. <laughs> I'm going, really? And that was the most exciting, exhilarating experience I ever had. Uh, it was a lecture flying, and it was beautiful. Uh, there were songs being sang, and this whole temple was full 
of angels. I thank the Lord every day, and I bless you all. Amen. Give the Lord some praise. Give the Lord some praise. He's worthy. Tap your hands like you mean. Amen. Amen. Thank God for the testimonies and for the praise and for the songs that have went forth. And uh, we're going to uh, entertain the Bible with voices if they will come. Amen. From where you are, those that sing with the Bible way voices. And, uh, I do. I do. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, you 
seconds here, but I just want to share with you that uh, this is going on uh, all the time. This is not uh, something that's uh, just uh, because uh, it's today. This is the day uh, that the Lord has made and we rejoice in uh, every day. Amen. And, uh, we have a motto here. And I just want you to join in with me uh, with this motto. And I want you to reach out and take someone by the hand and to repeat after me as we, amen, uh, share uh, with those that we're talking to. Amen. All right. What time? Look at them in the eye and tell them you're in the right place and you are here at the right time. It has been said and it's true that you belong here. What time is it? What time is it? What time is it? All right, we pray here. We pray here. Give the Lord some pray. Amen. Amen. It's prayer time. It's prayer time. It's serving uh, the Lord time uh, all the time. And so we're glad for uh, what the Lord is doing. Glad to see some back from out of town, the corners. Amen. We've uh, been praying for them and uh, thank God that everything is working out. Let's remember the prayer uh, list, those that we've been praying for. Uh, Kalanda Butler and uh, also uh, Benji uh, Gordon uh, and uh, Eunice Kennedy. Amen. Of course, those that are here in, in, in uh, our midst, that God is blessed in, 
and amen, they'll recover in the name of the Lord. And so we just appreciate what the Lord is doing. And I thank God for all the songs that have went forth, all the testimonies that pray. Amen. We overcome what? By our testimonies and by what? The blood of the Lamb. So uh, God is working all the time. So without any further ado, and then we'll get uh, some other things done after the preaching today. We just feel led to bring the preacher uh, now, uh, and he is. Amen. Associate Minister here at Bible Way. Uh, outstanding young man in the Word, and of course, he's just uh, certainly a, uh, a rock. Amen. And he's just been consistent down through the years. I appreciate uh, him and uh, his uh, work ethics when it comes uh, not only his personal life, but uh, his participation in the church and all of that matters. And so, uh, uh, at this time, without any further ado, if he'll come, amen, we will uh, present him to this uh, body and also we'll introduce him uh, to those that are listening uh, today. Uh, and I just want him to come and let's receive him at this time, Elder Nelson Slaughter. Amen. El Elder Nelson Slaughter. Let's receive him with a hearty amen. Give the Lord some praise. Amen. Get ready for the word. He's a preacher. Amen. First thing I got on today is uh, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Household of faith. Amen. Thanking God for his goodness and his grace. Thanking him for his mercy. Amen. And so far we've been singing. We've been dancing. But now somebody say, here comes the main course. All right. You know, and I want to say, starting out, you wouldn't look at, you wouldn't notice or look at me, but I'm a very shy individual by nature. Anytime I come before y'all, I'm in prayer. I'm in prayer because I'm nervous. And I think any man, anytime a man or woman of God comes before God's people and understand the gravity, the gravity of what's about to be presented and the impact that it has on the lives and attitudes and spirits of God's people, that's something that we don't take for granted. And if one is not a little bit anxious, if one's not a little bit nervous, there's something wrong. Because me as a man, I'm nothing without Jesus Christ. And today my prayer is that the Lord's word will resonate with you, that it will cause you to reanalyze, reprioritize, reconnect. Whatever we you need that God will provide. But before we get started, let's have a word of prayer. Father, in your name, Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this day that you've made, this time that you've appointed. Even this blessed privilege that we have, Lord, to feed off the good news. Lord, we pray that the souls that are gathered here today, name by name and one by one, will accept your word, Lord, that they will meditate on its precepts, that they will apply it in every life application. Father, we're praying now for our bishop, and Lord, we continue to ask that you bless him. We ask that you bless the first lady, Lord, and we ask that you bless all the saints, not only here at this fellowship, but our brothers and sisters throughout the world, earth that are right now, Lord, praising you, worshiping you, magnifying your name. But we're praying today for that soul that may be contemplating coming to the cause of the cross. Lord, we're praying right now that you will move mightily on his or her heart. That one is contemplating suicide right now. Let them know that there is another way. There is another life in you, Lord. Father, I humble myself before you now. And I will decrease. And I ask that you increase. That I be a blessing to you first and foremost. Because truly it is a privilege for all of us to be in the house of prayer. And we thank you for these other blessings. I want to give honor, amen, to my pastor, Bishop Colbert, and to uh, even Lady Elect, Mother Colbert, and to all the ministers, evangelists, teachers, preachers, and certainly the household of faith. A special shout out to my wife, who I believe is watching me now and screaming, baby, I love you. To my family. Uh, also, I got some other family in Atlanta that's watching me today. I want y'all to keep the Bell family. 
and the uh, Watkins family, your prayers today. Amen. That's my family in Georgia, and I appreciate them for tuning in today. I didn't want y'all to pray for Elder Slaughter. Because as I said, I don't want to tell you what I think you need. I want to express to you what God has set forth for this time and this moment. Our scripture today can be found in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 3. And I'll read in your hearing verses 9 through 17. 1 Corinthians 3, 9 through 17, and the word reads, For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he build it thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Right. Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stove, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abideth which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, that, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy. Which temple are ye? May the Lord have a blessing to the reading, to the hearing, and the performing of his word. And if I would, my sermonette top title is called, Will My Church Pass Inspection? Will My Church Pass Inspection? A preacher was retiring after 25 years in the pulpit. And one day he came to his office to clear out his stuff. And as he looked under the sofa, he found a small bowl with five eggs and $10,000 cash. Surprised, he called his wife and asked, Honey, what is this basket of eggs and money doing under the sofa? Oh, she said, I must confess that every time you preach a bad sermon, I put an egg in the basket. Secretly, the preacher was pleased because he thought to himself, only five eggs in 25 years? And he said, what about the $10,000? She replied, well, every time I got a dozen, I sold them. As I said earlier, it's a great responsibility because God's word is important. We know it as the truth. Amen. And it's been said, and the truth shall make you free. And any man or woman that stands before you proclaiming the truth, first themselves must obey and follow that same truth. And as I've said in the past, any time that I preach to you, it starts with this church. See, the church is not made of wood and stone. I think you guys understand that when the rapture comes, by the way, building ain't going over. Amen? After Jesus comes and calls for him his own, by the way, will still be here. And guess what? Some of you too. I'm get ahead of myself, though. I'm going to scare nobody. The truth shall make you free. Church is not wood, stone, or glass, but it is made up of people. Amen? The church is you. I'm always amazed when I hear people say, I'm going to church on Sunday. 
Because if you get my mind, I'm thinking, well, you're bringing the church with you, amen? amen. The Bible says your body is a temple of God. Then the church. The question is, what kind of church is it? It's made up of people that have an invisible union with visible individuals. Our fear of God is at the center of our relationship. It's what keeps us knit and fitted together. All right, yeah. Now, when the Spirit of God ain't inside the temple, as y'all know, chaos ensues. Paul speaks of his church in the book of Ephesians. He calls it a universal church. It's not a black church. It's not a white church. It's not Roman Catholic. It's not Episcopalian. It's not Methodist. It's those that have called Jesus Christ their Lord and Savior. They've been baptized in his name, filled with his spirit, washed in the blood. That's the church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every individual in here is made itself part of the larger body. And also, each of you is a church. Paul says we are living epistles. That's right. I always ask the question, when they look at you, what do they read? Yeah. Huh? Are they reading Sports Illustrated? Because all you want to talk about is them cowboys? Man, I, I'm a cowboy. But that ain't the only thing I want to talk about. Are they reading old magazines? Old magazines? Talking about the latest fashion, the latest hairstyles? That's all that's coming out your mouth? Is it the National Enquirer? Because all you got is a bunch of gossip. Y'all know the National Enquirer, right? You can go about anybody. Anybody from anybody got some news from the National Enquirer. Or are they reading God's plan of salvation for their life in you? Each of us is a church, a dwelling place of Jesus Christ. And guess what? He will not dwell in any unclean temple. Amen? Now, by the way, a building has under it what? A foundation. Right? I think the church has been here about, what it's building, been here about 50, 60 years. And you look in the wall, is still standing. The roof is still up. In other words, it was built on a solid foundation. Yeah, we have to maintain the walls and the ceiling and things like that, but the foundation is set in the church. What is our foundation? Right there. Jesus Christ. The same yesterday, the day of evermore. Jesus is the rock. The rock of our salvation. Amen? The most important part of any building is the foundation. Ephesians 2 and 20 tells us, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. In your church, the foundation has to be laid on Jesus Christ. Didn't hear me say Muhammad. You hear me say Buddha. You hear me hear me say Confucius. Though they also have followers that have built their foundation on them. The last time I checked, Muhammad's still dead. Confucius still dead. Buddha's still dead. But guess what? Sometimes those followers and those believers have a solid, a more solid base than we do. It's a shame, ain't it? I ain't trying to hurt your feelings. I'm trying to talk to you today. I have much of a friend that are faithful in praying. Three times a day they pray. Three times. At the job, they go out to the car and they pray. And y'all pray for me because sometimes it's all I can do. Get one prayer in before the business meeting at 10 o'clock. And I'm glad I did it. Three minutes. Now I know y'all got, I know y'all serious in y'all prayer. Me, three minutes. 
y'all mind. We're going to y'all my, my, my weakness is because, as I said, we are a church. We build each other up. Y'all have started to say, be me a stronger prayer life. Pray for me. Say, Lord, help him to have a stronger prayer life. Now, I'm not saying I don't pray. I pray. I'm just saying, I'm just giving an example. They out there three times a day praying to a God they don't even know. Well, let me take you. Let me take you. I'm sorry. But the Bible says that no man comes to the Lord except by Christ. If Jesus ain't coming off your lips, your prayer's in vain. Somebody said, no, I'm talking too much now. I pray. The foundation is the most important part of any structure. So as I'm talking to you, I want you to ask, what is my foundation? It is in Christ only that God is reconciling a sinful world unto himself. 2 Corinthians 5 and 19. Christ is the only way, the only truth, the only life. Yeah, yeah. If you're not in Christ, you're out. You're out. Now, the foundation comes from the Word of God. Now, I'm talking about amen with you, though. Amen. The foundation is the Word of God. Amen. In here, you got 26 love letters to us, the church. Genesis and Revelation. And they all point to Christ. Do y'all know in geometry they say that the shortest distance between any two points is a straight line? See, if your life ain't pointing to Christ, you're going to ride it the long way around. Make a beeline straight to Jesus. That's what you need to do. You must base your life upon the scripture. The Bible says, in them, you have life. You have hope. You have commitment. You have dedication. You know, when you go to school to get your degree, I, I, I seriously doubt if you're going for a, a doctor's, even a bachelor's, that you don't spend some time in those books. That's Amen? Right. Right. Otherwise, you don't get a piece of paper. You are preparing yourself through studying, meditation, uh, uh, dedicating, you're doing everything you can to get that little slip of paper that at the end is temporal. I don't care how many degrees you get. If it ain't tied and sealed by the blood of Jesus, it's faithful. It's not in it. In your coffin, you don't see no master degree hanging above you, right? Nobody care about that. Amen. The foundation is the word of God. The apostles, the prophets, the judges, others, they, through the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, 2 Timothy 3.16, right? All scripture is given. Yeah. Right? Yeah. By man, right? No. See, when you talk to people, they're going to tell you, the Bible was written by man. Yeah, it was written by men. And they were inspired. Because I don't know about you, but when I read some of this truth in here, it don't align with my, my ideologies. The way I would handle things, Jesus said, love your neighbors. Even if they do evil unto you, love them. Oh, yeah. oh, man, somebody slap me. Somebody slap me. Come on, other cheek. I might go back and like, I get my arm. Like, Woo! Yeah. You keep it real. Slap you by the corner, you and I will be. Mm-hmm. I know y'all say sanctified Holy Ghost still, y'all. Sign in here, brother. Somebody said salvation was free. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. It cost you your life. Amen. It cost you. Too many folks think that once I go down in the water and come up speaking another tongue, my labor is finished. No, 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 no. No, no. No, no. It just began. See, before you were enemy to the call of Christ, now you own the side. And just like Jesus, you got to pick up your cross daily. Well, my church has inspection. That's what I'm asking you this morning. 
See, Paul says in verse 10, he says, According to the grace of God which is given unto me as a wise Macedonian. Paul says, God has allowed me by his grace to be a co-worker with him. Paul's not saying, I laid the foundation. He's saying, no, God has blessed me, equipped me, empowered me to share with you that that he has for the church. He says, I as a wise master, but what he's saying is that I, through the grace and power and person of Jesus Christ, Bishop Culver is a master builder, but he's not the master. He's a contractor with skills and talents endowed by the Holy Spirit, but he would tell you Jesus Christ is the architect. See, master builder is translated architect in Greek. Where we got our word architect from? And as you guys know, an architect is responsible for the overall construction of the, of the building, whatever it is he's building, right? He or she is there from start to finish, making sure that it meets the customer's approval. God is the architect. We are builders. You also are builders. As I said earlier, each one of you is putting in work into another foundation. The question is, are you putting in gold, silver, precious stone? Or are you putting in eight? So, uh, uh, think about that. What are you putting in to the church of God, to the people of God. What are you putting into their foundation? Jesus said in Matthew 16 and 18, after he asked the disciples, they were having a conversation. Jesus said, who y'all say that I am? Or who man say that I am? Y'all know what I'm saying, you're John the Baptist. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Say you, you know, you're, uh, you're uh, Jeremiah. Right. Jesus said, I don't know what they think. Well, who do you say that I am? Right. And I can only imagine if I was there looking at them, the, the, the look of surprise on their face. Why are we all thinking who I think he is? Because they didn't have any idea. If we were true for what I said, they thought a miracle. Right. They experienced the power. Right. Now, they didn't have the Holy Spirit yet because Christ was still with them. Right. They saw the dead raised, the blinded eyes open, the hungry fed, the naked clothed. Crazy folk got their right mind back, and Jesus said, Who do y'all think I am? And the only one to answer was Peter. Peter, the same one that would deny him thrice, but the same one that Christ built the church upon. Amen. Peter, Peter said, Thou art Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said, Peter, man has not been built this thing. See, when you came to God, it wasn't your friend. That convicted you to repent. They have brought now, they, they have laid a foundation. It wasn't your friend that led you up to the, to the pool. It wasn't your friend that put the Spirit of God in your tongue. It was Jesus Christ. Paul said in that third Christian, that third chapter of Corinthians, some water, some plant. God gives the increase. There's a plant, there's a water. 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 But he gives the increase. Hallelujah. Quit getting mad if your friend ain't gonna come and get saved the 15 times you ask in the church. That ain't your job. It's God who convicts the sinner. And guess what? They're gonna be in church to be convicted. It'd be nice if when the altar call is given, I got some running. But my job is to plant or to water. Pass the plant, water. But the folks plant water. It ain't gonna work. Right. All the fertilizer you want. <laughs> so, the purpose of a foundation is to build something upon it, right? Y'all see, they laid the foundation by the way first, right? And once now, understand, before they even got started, there was an inspector. Anytime you build something, anybody here, a, a professional builder or no matter, you know, you're ready to build something, the inspector has to come out. He, she 
they and them come out and they say, what are you trying to do? I'm going to go to church. Right. What kind of foundation are you going to lay? I'm going to lay it to concrete foundation. All right. See, their job is to make sure that your foundation follows city code. Right? right. right? City code, city ordinance, you ain't laying nothing until they say, the inspector said, you meet the criteria. You ain't going nowhere in Christ until you meet the criteria. Oh, come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. He ain't going nowhere. This building has to be inspected by the Holy Spirit and say he's ready to build on it. She's ready to build on it. Yeah. 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 This building needs inspection. Then after they come out and inspect, they say, okay, go ahead and lay your seat in. Lay it all out, get into the high five. They come out again. Let me look at it. They take a measure they, they, they want to make sure it's right. Right, right, right. Guess what? The Holy Ghost, when he comes in, he's taking measurements. Right. He's looking. He knows that Jesus is in there. But now he's saying, now it's time to build upon that foundation. But let me check for some cracks. Yeah. Let me check for some unevenness. Let me make sure it's balanced. Oh. Holy Spirit, the inspector. And I guarantee you, he don't get it wrong. See, sometimes y'all know, at my house, I'm around my house, and there's a part of my, over my wall, just like a little bit, like, just like, like a minor bulge, just a little bit, I mean, it ain't like it's a game stop. But I'm thinking to myself, now, when I built this house, somebody didn't inspect that wall, because that's a little bit small out there. But see, when God inspects you, Woo. it's perfect. This report is perfect. Ain't no bulges. Ain't no cracks. Ain't no broken pipes. Oh, it's done. Thank you, Lord. He said, in, in Acts 3, 12 to 15, he says, Now, if any man built upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stone, we're talking about the church now. We're talking about you, your temple. What are you building on it, and what are you allowing others to build on it? He said, gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, stuff. What are you building with? You're here today. Let's look at that. Let's look at gold. You're reading the word. A little bit more gold. But guess what? You're supposed to spot gold. I don't know about y'all, but just spot it. If there's a piece of gold over in that carpet, and Leslie was digging up that carpet, I'm about to miss it. I'm 50 years old. I'm getting, I'm getting blind. What I'm going in is that that little piece got to grow bigger and bigger. When God starts to work on your inside, he's growing you. He's increasing you. The Bible says that ye are the light of the world. All right. right? But, but if the light ain't But see, I always say to myself, 
if God did me, may I have done him? But he come to love. Then the times the group, I said, I love the Lord and would have had just lied all day that day. I love Jesus. And the Lord said, that's good. But if you love me, keep my commandments. See, be careful when you use that word love. Please understand which the reference. God is love. You tell somebody I love you, understand you saying that I have a godly love for you. But you think twice they come I'm, I'm saying you can, and people say, well, I can, I can, I can love you from a distance. <laughs> that ain't no love. That's like me and my wife saying, hey, we, I, you know, I, I got to go here. No, forget all that. If I love you, that's what love is. Right? I'm sorry, baby. I'm not trying to embarrass you. I'm going to hear about that one. But back to the word here now. Sorry. Hallelujah. Who builds upon this church? Ask yourself that. Who am I allowed to pour into my foundation? See, some folks don't need to be pouring into your foundation. Let's just keep it real. Sometimes it's the friends. That's my girl. But she got my back. What's she pouring into your foundation? That's my dog. He got my back. What's he pouring into your foundation? That's my crew. That's my crew. What they pouring into your foundation? What they pouring in there? Gold, precious stones. See, y'all know about gold, and, and when you heat up gold, does it evaporate? It melts. If the fire's hot, but it doesn't evaporate, it doesn't disappear, right? Wood hand stone, like the fire to that, it's gone. See, everything you do has has everlasting impact. Did y'all know that there will be two judgments? There will be two judgments. One for the righteous and one for the unrighteous. I pray that you had the judgment of the righteous because that's the judgment of Christ. That's when after we've been raptured up, you're going to be before the Lord. You're going you're gonna to sit down here one on one. He's going to say, Here's your life. And he's going to show you everything you did since you were saved. Because remember, the Bible said that. Come to Christ, that old stuff is cast away, right? Now, the question is, was your good evil spoken of? Were you doing things with the wrong intent? With the wrong motivation? Because that's going to be there. And then the other judgment, the white throne judgment, if you there, it's a question of what type of reward? Because there will be reward for the damned as well as the righteous. In case you didn't know that, I put it in there for free. There's going to be two rewards one for the righteous, one for the unrighteous. And I'm sorry, if I'm in hell, it don't matter how much hell I'm getting, it's too much. Don't go to hell. You hear people all the time saying, Bible says, every knee shall bow, and every tongue will confess. I hear you. If you stand at the, at the white throne judgment, you're going to be, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. If you ain't ever been sorry before, you're going to be sorry then. And guess what he's going to say? You have the chance. You let the wrong things build upon your foundation. You have wood, hay, and stuff. And now they will be consumed. Every man, woman, boy or girl is a church and they pour into the church. Sometimes young people think, I'll get saved when I get older. I'm going to have my fun now. And young people die every day. Amen? In Germany, a young man, keep that man's family in your prayers, a teenage boy 
went to the mall and started shooting up other kids. He invited them to McDonald's with the promise of a party or whatever. And when they showed up, he started busting cats. I think he, I think he killed seven people and it took his own life. Young people woke up that day and thought, man, today is a good day. I'm going to go to McDonald's and give me a free meal. I'm gonna meal. And now they go. I don't know if they were saying that. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that young and old die every day. When I was little, I used to think, I'll get saved when I'm 50. But thank God at 12, I said, Lord, okay, this thing is real. Was baptized and filled with this Holy Spirit. Into our influence. So, young people today, if you're not baptized, please consider. Better to be safe than sorry. What are you using for your building materials? By the way, we have, uh, we got. Uh, we got these more brick and mortar walls, right? Strong. We've had tornadoes, we've had strong thunderstorms, snow, ice, wind, and the building still standing. It was built with good material. Gold, silver. No, I mean that ain't gold. You know what I'm saying? Right? Strong materials. You need to be pouring strong material into your foundation. Starting with the word of God. This is the toolkit right here, right? This is the toolkit. You got your hammer in there, bang out them tough, them rough spots, that screwdriver to tighten up your knowledge and your commitment. All right. You got the flame, but you feel a you, you say you ain't too, what they say, so heavenly minded that you don't want to be like me. You know, don't get your, you know, you ain't too high minded. You got uh, the, you got the pliers, so that when you, when you gotta, when you gotta get to them tough areas, you, can, you gotta tighten up and get to those twists and turns of life, and you can, you can loosen, you can, you can tighten what you need to do. The tool keeps the body. The word. This is what helps you stand. See, there's either permanent or there's temporary. Is your building permanent or is it temporary? What are you pouring into your spirit? And more importantly, what are you, what are you pouring into others? When they see you, do they see, oh, here comes sister. She's always complaining. Always got something negative to say about somebody. Dude, I don't know about y'all, but I don't like to go around people who criticize the church or the saints. Run as far as you can from those people. The enemy's at work. The Bible says he is the accuser of the brethren. Amen? We ain't wrestling against each other. What are we wrestling against? Flesh. No. Question is, are you giving them a target? Holy Ghost blocks all that. Holy Ghost like a shield of armor around them, right? Fire starts to bounce off all the time. So when they ain't no armor and them fiery darts come, ooh, ooh, and they think, you know, <laughs> we ain't seen you in five months. The church is the hospital, amen? We stay. We come to the hospital to get our treatment. The good doctor, Jesus Christ, is here. His prognosis is life eternal. Thank you, Lord. Psalms 127 1 says, Except the Lord build the house. If the Lord ain't building his temple, oh. your labor is in vain. And if the Lord built a house, they are laid. They try to build a house, build it in vain. The city can't even be watched unless the Lord watching it. This church is the city. They can't be watched if God ain't watching it. Do y'all understand that they live godly shall suffer persecution? Y'all understand that? Sometimes we wonder, God, why me? Why did that happen to me? What did I do to deserve this? Jesus Christ asked the same thing of you. What did I do to deserve this? Your unbelief, your doubt, your self-criticism, your depression. Y'all know what I said depression is? I 
think depression is a situation where a person is thinking about too much about themselves. Too much me in the equation. Put some Jesus in there, and I believe that 60% of depression will be cured. Put Jesus in there. Get it off of me, 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 my problem. Oh, I was depressed once, and it was too much me in there. Oh, why I can't do it. Oh, why, 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 why. Your money ain't right, look at your pride. Why you can't make no new friends? Look at your pride. Unbelief. Yeah, in the church, there is unbelief. We say with our mouth, God can do all things but fail. But let that eviction notice get on your door. You call him First Federal, Bank of America, Grandma, Grandpa, Uncle Auntie, doing everything you can to keep that house. Instead of saying, Lord, we're going to get through this together. Now, if the sign's on your door, that means you didn't do something right to begin with. And expecting God to bring you. See, God ain't going to fool. Don't, don't, don't think if I don't bring my words to three months, God will bring you through this. No, he's not. He said, oh, no, man, oh, no, man, anything. Take care of your business. I take care of mine. Expect me to take care of yours. Hallelujah. Unbelief. The Bible says it's like witchcraft. You don't trust God? It's like witchcraft. He don't want no part of that. And he was rewarded. 
of them that kill it. Now, that just don't mean see him in time of need only. That means every day I'm on my knees saying, Lord, fill me, fill me, fill me, fill me. Direct me, direct me, direct me. Proverbs says, all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. Your adversary. Now, verse 15. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. When you stand at the judgment seat, and God shows you all the time you were witnessing, all the time you were fasting, all the time you were helping the homeless, feeding the homeless, uh, the time that you were uh, at all the Church meeting, everlasting bit of one, singing in the choir, playing the organ, evangelizing the world, but your motive was stuff and glory. It was all about you. You want to hear accusation in you. Yeah. Yeah. Here's the song about 75 souls to the Bible. Yes, I did. <laughs> God's going to say, What about you? What about you? Gotta be careful of what's worth it. What are you building with? It's all about you. Check your motive. Check your motivation. Why am I here five way this morning? Check that. Why are you here? Why are you here? He said. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. Now, Paul's saying that at the judgment seat of Christ, let me understand something. He said, at the judgment seat of Christ, you made it in. You made it in. But the Bible says, it's like one who escaped the flame, coming through the flame. Your house is on fire, and you came out with just with your tattered rags on. That's all you got to show for. You barely made it out. Peter said, it's all but the righteous. Scarcely be enough. See, sometimes we think we are all that. You're barely gonna make it in. All the work that you've done, you still barely gonna get in there. Then he said, What does it really mean like? If the righteous barely makes it in, what I'm saying is that if you love your loved ones, you need to show them right now. You need to get this thing right. Keep yourself right. Keep warm in. Go precious stones into this foundation and help build others' foundation. Church folk have ran more stuff church and Satan. serving God, but you 
Sermon Man, aka Jesus, aka Devil. Who are you serving this morning? Who dwells in this temple? If there's any doubt in your mind, who's inside of here? You get to this altar. Do some house cleaning. See, in the real world, if a building is condemned, they put, some, they put the sign on, condemned. They put the sign on your head, condemned. But guess what? Jesus said, no, do not condemn. Come on back in. Come on to me. All you got labor, get a heavy lady, and I'll give you rest. I'll give you rest. I'll make that thing right. Come to me. Me, it's all about Christ. He paid the cost to be the boss. Yes. He is it. Get that sign off. No trespassing. No, Jesus said, I'm coming in. Let him come in. Let him come into your building. Is it ready for inspection? Is it ready for inspection? Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God dwells in you. Thank God he thought enough about us to form something pure Amen? God took the spirit, holy, consecrated, and he poured it into your vile, corrupt temple. And just like drain will clean that drain out, the Holy Ghost is going to go in there and going to clean all that mess out. The pipes are clear. Now I can run with the power. This morning, if you don't know Jesus Christ, welcome in, welcome in into your temple yes. and to your church. This is the Lord's house of prayer right here. Point to yourself and say, this is the Lord's house of prayer. This is the Lord's dwelling place. Right here. Is he dwelling in you? Have you allowed the inspector, the Holy Ghost, inside? Have you allowed Jesus Christ, not just being a hero of the word, but are you a doer of the word? Zechariah 4, 6b says, not by power. Your own power is weak. You can't do it yourself. I'm a good person. I got good morals. I, I follow, I do it all morning. You can't do nothing. Then it's a matter of time before Satan come in there on that I'm good he going to mess all that up. He waiting. See, if you guys in the world, you sometimes think to yourself, they ain't going through nothing. No, the devil got them. He has a finite amount of time to do what he got to do. Why waste on those he already got? He coming for the church. Those that live godly shall suffer persecution. But Jesus said, I come. I come. I come. That you might have life. That you might have more abundance. Jesus has come for you today. Check your temple. Check your temple. Does God dwell in here? Or am I having a form of God? A form of God. Ask yourself that. Because when we stand before him on that day, then that all, we want to hear him say, well done. Well done. Enter into the joy of thy Lord. Not depart from me, ye work of iniquity, for I never knew you. Y'all pray, my friend. Hallelujah, what a word today. So many nuggets in that message today. And I guarantee you, if you haven't uh, been inspected, you need to and then let the Lord inspect you. And, uh, and I'm telling you, if, 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 if you're not passing the inspection, then you need to say, Lord, have your way. <laughs> Lord, here I am. 
Lord Jesus, do what you need to do so that I can pass this inspection. Because, see, everybody's got to be ready when the Lord comes back. Uh, it's not no hidden and missing, no guessing, no I think so. But when the master inspector come back, we've got to all be ready to answer that call. I'm telling you today, the Lord has spoken in a mighty way. This word today was solid. Amen. We're talking about building something. Building something suitable for God. Not just anything. Something that will stand the test. And Jesus said, I am come that you might have life. I think y'all were listening to the same word that I was. That you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Everybody must pass the test. Everybody must be born again. Everybody have got to come by the door. Jesus said, I am the door. <laughs> Hallelujah. If any man come, he's got to enter in by the door. If you enter in any other way, you'll count it as a thief and a robber. Thieves and robbers will have no part when it comes to going to heaven. Amen. You must be born again. How can I be born again? How can I be made anew? How can I be converted? What must I do to be saved? I'm glad you asked that question. Amen. The way that one is saved is through obedience to the word. Obedience to Christ. Uh, without obedience, you're not going to make it. Obedience is better than sacrifice to hearken than the fat of wrath. Jesus said to Nicodemus, you must be born again of the water and of the spirit. This is a spiritual birth. This is a supernatural thing. And, and, and that's the only way that we can make it in. Hallelujah. That's the only way that we can inherit eternal life with him. All the preacher covered from top to bottom. <laughs> Glory be to God. I'm just coming to let you know. Amen. The Bible says repent. In other words, I've, I've got to have a sorrowful heart. I've got to humble myself. I've got to say, Lord, uh, I need thee. Oh, I need thee, Lord. Blessed Savior, I need you. I need you now, Lord. I can't afford to wait until tomorrow. I've heard your voice. I've heard your call. I've heard your cry, Lord. Here I come, Lord. I remember one time I was in service and there was a fella. He was a bad man. He packed. Amen. He goes. But one day, one night, amen, he heard the voice of Jesus said, come unto me and rest. And I saw this man get up out of his seat and run down the aisle with tears running down. Amen. And he said, I want to be saved. I want to be saved. I want to be saved. Glory be to God. And he went to the water. He was baptized. Amen. For the remission of his sins, he rose up. Amen. And God filled him with the Holy Spirit. He filled him with the Holy Ghost. Amen. And that man left. Amen. That night rejoicing. And you know what? Amen. He got in the church. Amen. The church was in him. And he worked and labored in the church. It was a blessing. Amen. And he was a light to other people. You see, my friends, 
Glory be to God. It is a golden opportunity. A golden opportunity to lead somebody to Christ. If you're here today, you haven't been baptized. Amen. In the water, the liquid grave. Amen. Baptized unto Christ and rise to the newness of life. It's in Christ. Somebody say, well, how can that be? I know it seems like, amen, it's so simple. Amen. It, it is simple. It, it is plain. It is clear. And sometimes folk want something to be hard. <laughs> amen. Before they feel like, uh, you know, it's, anything is going on. But Jesus, amen, he said, amen, it's simple. The plan of salvation is simple. Just obey God. Obey him today. If you're here today, it's water. We can baptize you in the water. Amen. The Lord will fill you with his Holy Spirit and you can be saved and rejoiced and made anew. You will have passed the inspection. When Christ comes, you've got to be ready. You've got to be ready. Hallelujah. There's no other name. No other name. Hallelujah. Any one more prayer for anything? Just raise your hand. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. I know I want prayer. <laughs> Amen. I need the Lord. Amen. To move in, 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 in some ways. Bow your head with me. Father, in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord. If it's somebody next to you, just take their hand. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we touch and agree. We touch and agree, Lord. Lord, my God, move, Lord. You know the need, Lord. You know the burden. You know the height. You know the depth. Lord, you know the width. Ah, Lord, that's nothing. My God, that's hid from you. Lord Jesus, you know the lost. Lord, you know, my God, the same. We pray today to move, Lord, every heart as your word has went out. Lord Jesus, you sent your word and it healed them. My God, as your word has went out, oh God, today. Draw them, draw them, draw them, Lord. My God, save, Lord, save. Everyone under the sound of my voice, those that are listening and don't know him in the power of his death, burial, and resurrection, call on the Lord now. Whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hallelujah. You confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. With the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. God is a savior today. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We give your name the glory. In Jesus' name. And let the church say amen. Amen. God bless you today. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Mr. Sarge, we appreciate the visitors today. We appreciate those that are uh, constant. Amen. It's, it's, just, it's just a pleasure to be in the house of the Lord. Yes, we're going to receive the offering. We, we're not going to, amen, we're not going to uh, forget the offer. We're going to ask you to prepare to give at this time. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Giving is part of godliness. Amen. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. Amen. Also, Sister Christmas.